Good afternoon, good evening everyone. Welcome to St. Angela Marici. Let's take a moment before we begin and greet one another, make sure everybody feels welcome. Tonight we are celebrating the fifth Sunday of Easter, so I invite you to open your books to number 599, Christ Be Our Light, 599. Please stand. visitors from near or far. How many of you are joining us as guests and visitors this evening? Please raise your hands. Let us know who you are. Any visitors? Welcome to visitors. It's nice to have you here. We hope you feel at home as we celebrate the Eucharist together as God's family. So together in faith, we make our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the grace and peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And friends of the gospel today, we're reminded, Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Remain in me. At times our lives have many different focuses, many different directions, and we forget that Jesus wants to abide with us and invites us to abide with him. Let's ask God for mercy and forgiveness for the times that we have sinned. Lord Jesus, you call us to abide in you like the vine and the branches. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, forgive us when we exclude or judge others. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, risen in glory, you intercede for us at God's right hand. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. the true vine, and with tireless care, you nurture our growth in knowledge and reverence. Tend the vineyard of your church, that in Christ each branch may give glory to your name by their faith and love. Grant this through Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to please be seated. And prepare to listen to God's holy word. The readings this week mark a shift from telling about the Easter events to issuing a call to action, a call to be fruitful. Saul seeks his place among the apostles, having himself encountered the risen Christ and preached about him in Damascus. The disciples at first reject Saul, whose reputation as a persecutor of Christians precedes him. However, with Barnabas as his advocate, Saul is taken in by the disciples and sent out to continue building up the body of Christ. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea 
and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in fear of the Lord. With the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way that we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Listen to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and everyone that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I speak to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches, Whoever remains in me and I in them will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus. Chance, did 
you count how many times Jesus used the word remain? Four, five, six, seven, eight times in this passage of the gospel, Jesus uses the word remain. Do you think he was trying to make a point? He uses the remain in me. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. A little story. When I was in graduate seminary in Menlo Park, wonderful, wonderful professor, uh, the rector of the seminary, Father Jerry Coleman. A few of you might know him. He's been a great friend of the Carmelites and down in Carmel for many, many decades. And uh, a wonderful, wonderful professor. And when you were a student in his class, every class would begin with a review, oral quiz from the previous class. So you had to really study. You couldn't fudge. And he would go around asking questions very poignantly about last week's material, the prior class's material. So today I have a review. I'm not going to give you a quiz, so don't fear, but I'm gonna give you a little review. What have we been celebrating during this season of Easter? Well, for Sunday of Easter, we celebrate this dazzling experience Christ rising from the dead. Jesus is risen. Joy, hope, salvation, born again. The second Sunday, we begin to discover what it means to be in the presence of the risen Lord Jesus. The third Sunday, it's how we recognize the risen Jesus. How do we recognize him? For us, especially in the breaking of the bread and word and sacrament. The fourth Sunday, last we recognize Jesus and acknowledge him as the Good Shepherd, and we begin to acknowledge how he gathers us as his people. Today, as we acknowledge we are gathered as the flock of the Lord, we are reminded that there's a connection, there's a deep connection that Jesus wants to forge in us. He wants to remain in us, and he wants us to remain in him. And this connection he uses with the image of the vine and the branches. The branches are sustained by the vine. And so hopefully, as members of the church, we are sustained by Jesus. We have to have a deep connection. What's our connection? How do we foster that? Individually, through prayer, through a sense of knowing the word ourselves, by spending time with Christ, hopefully uh, meditating, thinking about how it good God is to us in Jesus Christ. But also, what we had begin to acknowledge today during this Easter season as we move towards Pentecost, the birth of the church, we acknowledge that we belong. We belong to the community of the church. And belonging to the church means there's a connection where we remain in each other, but Christ is always at the root. Christ is always at the basis of everything we are about, everything we believe, and every ministry that we engage in, going out and bearing good fruit. There's something very poignant about the first reading. The church is living in peace, with one another, but it's also, it has been persecuted. And who's the greatest villain in the New Testament, the Acts of the Apostles? Who's the greatest villain? It's Paul. It's Saint Paul. He's the one that's going out and dragging Christians out of their homes and arresting them, and in some cases, watching them be killed. And he has a great transformation, great experience of Jesus, and he becomes one who proclaims the risen Christ. Now, for a moment, think about that. The guy who was the biggest enemy of the church has his conversion and says, I'm one of you guys now. One should be a little suspicious. <laughs> you know, there were, and that's what Jesus says, remember though, remain in me, and to remain in me is to be my children. And if you are my children, you accept everyone 
and you welcome everyone, and you embrace everyone. And that, my brothers and sisters, is a great reminder for us as people who remain in Jesus, as part of the flock, as part of the church. We have to be welcoming and inclusive, embracing all different people, all different walks of life. I don't know if some of you heard this. I might have mentioned it at a morning mass. We hear about terrorism, Hamas. Do you know that the founder of Hamas's son has become a Christian? That's a wow. Imagine if you knew him, you might be a little suspicious, right? But we're called to embrace others, to get to know them, to know their story, to understand and accept them as a person of faith in Jesus Christ. As we come to the Lord's altar, let's center ourselves in Jesus. He wants to feed us. He wants to be the basis of who we are and our ministry as Christians. Let's give thanks to God, for Jesus has not left us alone. We're not orphans. We remain in him, and he in us, like the vine and the branches. Amen. I invite you to please stand. As God's people of faith, together we profess the faith of our baptism. I believe in one God, God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United by the faith that we have professed, we express our love for others by praying for the needs of our entire human family. Let us pray for a renewed spirit of evangelization, that God's Spirit will empower the Church to give witness to the good news of God's love through deeds of loving service and working for justice. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are experiencing pruning through loss, transition, or change, that God will give them strength, guide them, and help them find courage and support through fellow believers. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for an end to violence in our communities that God will turn hearts from destructive deeds, open pathways for dialogue, and protect the innocent from harm. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who feel cut off 
from God, friends, families, themselves, or life itself, that God will show them how they are connected and lead them to those from whom they can draw life. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our As a family of faith rejoicing around the table of the Eucharist, we remember the deceased members of the Lopez family. And the souls of Mary Margaret Christen and Colonel Charles Christen. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God our Father, hear these prayers and inspire us to truly live as branches on the vine of your Son, who follows who follow his model of humble service and merciful love. All this we ask through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to please be seated as we continue our liturgy. This time we prepare to offer our gifts and thanksgiving to God. We're always grateful for the many ways you support our parish ministries. Thank you for your generosity. As we prepare our table, we will sing together number 329, Vine and Branches, 329.
God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in his sacrifice, have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but at this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as together we acclaim. supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. We giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, with Daniel, Celeste, our bishops, and all who serve you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who is a Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Angela Marici, Unipero Sarah, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages that we may merit to become heirs to eternal life and may praise 
and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> Divine to a branch, 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We invite everyone to participate in the communion procession. Together we approach the altar of the Lord. If you are not prepared to receive the Eucharist today, please cross your hands over your heart to indicate to us to give you a blessing instead. As a sign of our unity, we all remain standing until everyone has received the Eucharist as together we sing the communion song. So please take out your breaking bread books and open it to number 333, One Love Released.
As you remain seated, we conclude our prayer. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have nourished with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to the newness of life. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few announcements we'd like to share with you. First of all, for a little over two months, we've been working on our annual ministry appeal. Most of us know our goal has been $120,700. So far, we've had 172 households donate $114,352. So we're less than $5,000 from our goal. So that's a wonderful <laughs> contribution that we have made. We know that most of this money stays in our parish to help us fund all the ministries here at St. Angelo Ricci. So if you haven't already, uh, you could help us reach our goal this week. If you're able to sit down and pray about how you can uh, donate or make a pledge to this annual ministry appeal, we'd really appreciate it and we'd love to be able to have news that we're over our goal next weekend. So please pray about that if you haven't had the opportunity to do so yet. Knights of Columbus are here. They're selling raffle tickets in preparation for the Mother's Day breakfast in a couple of weekends. Our office staff would like to let you know that we appreciate your patience. Uh, we realize that we cannot at this time, and it's been for eight or nine days, um, receive emails. We, Google had a big glitch. We have a big glitch. We're working tirelessly with tech people to help us resolve this. Your pastor, has not been happy. <laughs> uh, please pray for our staff. It's very irritating, but it's one of the situations of technology today. We're gonna hope to resolve it as soon as we possibly can. But thank you for your patience with all of that. Last but not least, uh, next, well, this coming Friday, we're going to have our wonderful concert, our concert for peace. Uh, it's at seven o'clock here in our church. Please come, please invite friends, neighbors, family members, anyone you would like. It's a free concert through the generosity of Lana and all of our music ministers. So please come, our world needs peace. This is an offering, a music of peace, which is a prayer. So please plan to attend, and again, invite those you'd like to have join us. Let's fill up the church, let's listen to beautiful music, have a wonderful evening, and ask God to bless our world with peace. Once again, we welcome our, our guests and visitors this evening. We're grateful that you've joined us. Let's stand to conclude our celebration. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless us always, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended, go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Happy Easter, everyone. God bless. Happy Easter, Father. Happy Easter, Father. We go forth singing number 415 in Christ alone. 415. Thank you.